പി ഫോർട്ടി ഫൈവ് ബേക്കോളുടെ ഏരിയ സൂഡ്മലിയായി പെരി പ്രോസ് പെരി പ്രോസ്തെറ്റിക് ഇൻഫെക്ഷൻ ഫോളോയിങ് മീഡിയൽ മലയോല ഇൻറ്റേണൽ ഫിക്സേഷൻ എ കേസ് റിപ്പോർട്ട് ഇറ്റ് വി പ്രസൻറ്റഡ് ബൈ വി കോകുലൻ ടുഗദർ വിത്ത് യു ജയരാജ എ അരുൾ പ്രശാന്ത് സി പാൽകുമുറ എ ഫലീൽ ആൻഡ് ആർ സൂര്യ റിജി Good afternoon, sir. My presentation is a uh, Burkle Deria Sudameli Periprosthetic Infection Following Medial Malleolar Internal Fixation. This is reported in the BMC Infectious Diseases Journal in its March edition. Before going into details, let me give a brief introduction of Meliodosis, which is an emerging infectious disease in the tropics. especially in the far east asian countries and the northern part of the australian continent it's caused by a gram negative saprophyte burkleria sodomeli and it's associated with a wide spectrum of clinical manifestations from simple wounds to systemic illness and death meliodosis associated periprosthetic infection however is extremely rare and we hereby uh, describe a very first case of periprosthetic infection associated with meliodosis in the ankle joint our patient is a 49 year old tractor driver with a long standing type 2 diabetes and hypertension presenting with fever loss of appetite and generalized body ache for one week duration he had exposure to the paddy fields he was a non smoker and a social drinker he had no history of trauma and there were no cutaneous lesions he had however undergone a medial malleolar screw fixation 10 years back for a traumatic uncomplicated fracture of the ankle but given the background history of uh, the exposure to fields he was treated as leptospirosis at the local hospital with iv keftriazone however in few days he developed right ankle swelling with discoloration of the skin and was transferred to the national hospital of sri lanka for further management on admission at the tertiary center he was febrile tachycardic uh, he was dehydrated and his urine output was marginal and improved with fluid resuscitation he had a tender swollen ankle with uh, necrotic patches his inflammatory markers were high uh, liver enzymes were mar- uh, elevated and hba1c was very high and right ankle x-ray revealed a heel fracture to with two screws in situ but there was no evidence of an osteomyelitis patient underwent wound debris removal of the ankle uh, pus was drained from the subcutaneous plane and uh, ankle joint aspirate revealed purulent fluid so the diagnosis of septic arthritis was made and underwent arthrotomy and wash out specimen sent for culture there was a loosely fitted screw which was removed during the procedure uh, but the second screw obviously was not removed because of technical constraint and there was a possibility of causing an iatrogenic fracture This image shows the evolution of the wound following the debris mo the first one a immediately after and the c at 5 weeks after the initial wound debris mo uh, lower down we see the initial x rays on admission and the one taken at 2 months duration uh, initially the patient was managed with iv keftriazone and metronidazole however Uh, a diagnosis of meliodosis was uh, established after the cultures came positive for burkle diarrhea further confirmed by the direct identification system and his meliodosis antibody titer was also very high so he was uh, changed to merapenem according to the sensitivity pattern however the patient deteriorated in one week went into septic shock requiring inotropic support so the dose of merapenem was escalated to 2 g hourly along with oral cortrimoxazole Uh, along with metronidazole and he underwent repeated wound debris mo and with supportive management patient improved and an x-ray taken at 2 months showed some features of uh, osteomyelitis and the patient had to undergo iv uh, uh, antibiotics for 8 weeks uh, altogether and then was discharged with oral cortrimoxazole for 6 months duration Uh, at the end of 6 months at follow up he had a satisfactory functional outcome with acceptable range of mo- motion at the ankle joint there were no evidence of a clinical relapse and the x-ray findings were non progressive uh, 
uh, for in uh, for discussing in this case uh, melidosis though very new and being increasingly diagnosed in sri lanka uh, this diagnosis of melidosis in a periprostatic infection is often missed because of the rarity of the disease however when susceptible individuals present with periprostatic infection not uh, curing with the conventional antibiotics uh, the it should be sought uh, for diagnosis and an early diagnosis results in better outcome uh, and the patient might need prolonged courses of antibiotics with wound debris removal and whenever necessary may need a removal of the prosthesis these are my references thank you thank you dr mukulan uh, questions discussion how do you say it is increasing this particular infection type of infection do you have any other statistics uh, no so i am just basing on my uh, clinical practice earlier we have uh, i i have uh, from what i understood from my colleagues uh, i understand that the incidence of melidosis is increasing uh, at the same time uh, in our clinical practice these days we are encountering more patients with melidosis i'm not i'm i'm not having any figures to uh, to confirm you probably more people are looking out for melidosis now because it's <laughs> being recognized any more papa nice all right melidosis is being recognized more and more true yes yeah it's it's there among uh, it's being recognized by physicians um uh, some maybe it's self limiting as well like at times but, um, but when it involves the musculoskeletal uh, system uh, the the treatment uh, modality is uh, usually prolonged with uh, involving yeah, it, it, it does prolong uh, yes. do prolong uh, infection as well yeah. even in humans it does prolong 